Well, you're going to have a special amount of fun introducing this uh, next story, and for a good reason, because you are in it. Tell them about it. Oh, I love seeing things I'm in. I remember it well. It was back in 1966. I was 12. I was the guest star on the pilot of Star Trek. I had special magical powers, and let me tell you, back then, we couldn't have guessed the power and popularity that Star Trek would achieve. If you're like millions of Trekkies across the galaxy, and you're waiting for Star Trek II, the movie, well, you'll have to wait until June to see the movie, but you won't have to wait any longer for this exclusive behind-the-scenes look. Captain's log, stardate 7412.6. The impossible has happened. That was the feeling among the members of the original crew of the Starship Enterprise when they were reunited in 1979 in one of the most expensive movies ever made, over ten years after their television series had been canceled. Never, never did we dream that uh, ten years later we'd be back as a, what, 40 some odd million dollar film, and then a few years after that, uh, here we are, you know, in, in the uh, torpedo room, of Star Trek II. Thank God, you know, that we were all there and back together again. And uh, to me, it's a family that should never be broken up. It fits like a glove, Captain. Like it or not, we're part of, of a legend. The destiny of that legend is now in the hands of two newcomers to Star Trek lore, executive producer Harve Bennett and director Nicholas Meyer, who quickly discovered the dedicated and vocal following enjoyed by Star Trek. More than interested, almost frantic about it. At a given point, due to pressure from fan people and what's the story going to be and what's this and what's that, you can understand that we were kind of being driven up the wall by uh, the volume of mail, by pressure tactics, by certain uh, people who, as I say, felt over-possessive about Star Trek. So we simply decided on a policy, and the policy uh, is closed set. Uh, it's not a stunt. It's not a gag, it's not a publicity gimmick. It is a protective way of letting us do our work and make the best possible movie we can make. And you can see the problems. Like the man who crossed an Idaho potato with a sponge. It tasted horrible, but it sure held a lot of gravy. I don't exactly know how that fits in, but I do know. That I don't think a bunch of people can sit around and say, I think this should happen. Because then you get a movie that comes out that looks like something stamped on office furniture. Opinion, Mr. Spock. Recommend we proceed, Captain. Despite the external influences, all systems are go on Star Trek II for a June release. And the feeling around the set is so positive, there's already talk of continuing the saga. Star Trek III is a possibility. I think it's a distinct possibility. Uh, I think we'd have to fail pretty badly and prove that nobody wanted to see Star Trek again not to be able to do Star Trek III. It's a little premature at this particular moment to decide exactly what the next, if any, Star Trek project should be about and who should be involved with it and in what capacity. I need a recommendation, Spock, not a vague warning. I am looking forward to discussing, as soon as possible, the next Star Trek motion picture and, and my involvement with it. Now I'm ready for anything. Maybe we'll be doing the geriatric Star Trek uh, 20 years from now. <laughs>